thank you everybody for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. I'm going to angle slightly this way so you can't see Pat's elbow in the side of my camera. Um, so we are, <laughs> so as you guys know, we are still in the, uh, oh wait, where did Jason go? I think he was frozen. Oh, okay. Should we wait? <laughs> Is that why he was unresponsive uh, to our sweater yeah, compliments that's why he, that were he so polite? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if he if he comes back with a different sweater, then we'll know that he didn't. <laughs> um, I would love that. If he could just like disappear every like ten minutes for an outfit change. That would actually bring me great joy today. Like like an yeah. like an awards show. Yes, I love this. Um, should we, Alex? I don't know. Has he come back in the waiting room yet? I have not seen him come back in yet. So okay. um, I'll go ahead and hit pause. Oh no, there he is. We don't want to be rude and get the party started without all of our friends. Welcome back, Jason. Hello. Sorry, I could not hear a thing. So no, I'm that's okay. Out. We yeah. so we were complimenting your sweater, and we thought that you were just so <laughs> overcome with sweater compliments that you just left. <laughs> I couldn't take it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, we are so excited to be here with you. As you know, we've got about a week and a half left. Uh, time means. Yeah, time we have about a week and a half left in our yeah. Plasma Series Ectomobile Anniversary Edition HasLab campaign. And so just wanted to give people an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have that you have come across with your subscribers or followers or however you are soliciting questions today, whether they come from your own brain or the brains of others. Uh, if you don't know us at this point, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Emily uh, on the marketing team and Steve. No, Perfect. I'm, Pat. <laughs> I'm uh, graphics and uh, dabbling in some products. So happy to try and answer all the questions that I can answer. <laughs> and uh, if you ask a question that we can't answer, uh, I will come up with a very tactful PR approved marketing answer for it. Um, but you probably won't be getting a particularly large amount of information. I mean, sorry, Lenny from the GI Joe team just walked past the window uh, where we are and made a face at me. Um, <laughs> so, and we do have the models here. So if you have any specific model related questions, Pat will be able to switch his camera to the magic close up camera. Ooh, beautiful. Um, and we will uh, just try to get through as many questions as humanly possible. Sound okay to everybody? Sounds good, yeah. Groovy. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we want to do this diplomatically? Do we want to? I think we were told not to plug that into a computer. Oh, really? I feel like it. Uh, You're going to. OK. Mm. Oh, look, it worked fine. <laughs> Great. Well, angle your. There you go. Uh, I feel like that was something Zach warned us about, but we'll deal with those consequences later. Yeah. Um, do we mm, do you get did you guys come with questions? This is a very casual situation for us today. <laughs> clearly, like oh, we're. Yes. Yeah. How is everybody? Are we feeling good about good. today? I'm good. I'm winging yeah, it, though. Good. That's that's good, aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> that's all we can do. Um. All right. Well, maybe we just go around in question circles until we run out of questions. Sure. Cool. cool. Should we let Jason go first because we all like his sweater so much? Absolutely. Hey, Excellent. fantastic. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, one thing that uh, I've been seeing creep up quite a bit in the comments is regarding the decals of the Ecto-1A. Uh, I know it's been said that they're made... So they can, they can be re removed, reapplied, likely up to five times, possibly 10. And while I do think that's great, uh, I've read comments from people worried that this means those decals on the first application may not hold the best or look as good when compared to, let's say, if Hasbro was to you know put it on themselves. Um, given reapplication is in mind, for someone like me who wants to trick out the Ecto-1 into the 1A and just leave it like that, can we get some clarification or insight on the quality of those decals? Like if somebody is buying it just for the 1A, they apply those, is it going to look like it came right from the factory? Uh, I mean, I sure think it will. So the the decals that we're using on this are kind of standard across our HasLab executions. So for like, if you have a, on a GI Joe item, like a Hiss tank, or if you just got a dragonfly in. So I've had, every time we get a HasLab in, I open a box, I put decals on, and I kind of put it on a shelf and it just kind of hangs out there. I've never had issues with decals peeling on my end. I think if you're like, you peel a decal off of the sheet and maybe you put it on your hand and it gets oil on it and then you put it onto the plastic, you may have some sticking issues. 
but I haven't had issues with them peeling or with kind of them losing their stickiness if you're just putting them directly onto the vehicle. So that wouldn't necessarily be a concern that I would have on that. These all go through extensive testing. So we want to make sure that they, we know that these are expensive and they're dream items. So we want to make sure that they will look good and kind of hold up to what you want to use them for. I wouldn't necessarily take your Ecto-1A and like dunk it in a swimming pool and expect your decals to look like they're pristine like and out of the wash. buff. Yeah, I wouldn't like, maybe not a car wash situation. That was much better than a swimming pool. Thank you. <laughs> um, but like we we haven't had issues with um, decal applications that before. But I, I do very much understand that this is a, a group of fans who don't necessarily have a lot of exposure to doing mm -hmm. decals like this. So I promise that this is something that we have experience in. These will go through extensive QA testing. Um, and again, these are not, they're not paper decals. They are made out of vinyl. So they withstand being able to be kind of picked up and replaced. Um, but Excellent question. Follow ups for that. I have I have one. Okay. Um, I as, as, yeah, <laughs> literally nothing. <laughs> um, as as someone that uh, still has sticker anxiety from my youth of putting stickers onto a vehicle, including the Kenner Ecto One A, um, how are the directions going to be laid out to ensure that you know maybe novice decal applicators like ourselves? are set up for success that we're doing it right, hopefully the first time? That is an excellent question. So we have actually, the way that the de development on HasLabs is weird and we kind of go through the development process twice. So we are actually just starting on the instructions for this item. And so that is a, that's a great thing for us to be able to take into account while we are doing those instruction sheets is making sure that there are very clear diagrams, diagrams and- It will be as, as the, graphic designer and I might I might not be the one that does the instructions but uh there will be a robust amount of visual reference <laughs> um and you know with with any kind of uh high end item they all kind of come with decals <laughs> mm -hmm. um one you know uh th there's a a build a certain buildable ecto one that I believe also came with uh sticker it yourself type decals um there will be a, a very robust visual reference within those instructions for decal placement. And then awesome. Jay, somebody who also has that same sticker anxiety from childhood, <laughs> uh, we will make sure that there are extras of as many of the decals as we possibly can include on the off chance that you just, you either don't love how something is turning out or you're just like, oh, I can't with this one. I just want to start over. So we'll make sure that you have as many options as humanly possible. So giving yourself some, a little bit of that a uh, little grace and a little uh, extra buffer <laughs> is I think always nice too. And then as we're going through the process of, you know, walking you through development milestones and kind of doing those unboxing videos, we can make sure to, you know, have somebody stickering one on a video to say like, okay, let's, let's decal this thing together. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Teamwork. Maybe get Tony involved. Yeah. In yes. We'll yeah. have Tony give us his best decaling, uh, decaling like not cheats Experience. but yes um, <laughs> yes so, yeah. <laughs> so as i as i start to kind of dive into the the sheets that are going to come with this my goal is to try and cram as much stuff onto those sheets whether you need them or not like how many different logos can i throw on that sheet how many different caution stripes can i put on there like how many how many uh can i cram onto one page and then do that for as many pages that are going to come with us I I kind of have I, it. It relates to that uh, another follow up. Then, um, so one of my favorite looks is the Ghostbusters the video game, which is kind of a hybrid Ecto One Ecto One A. Will there be enough extra like GB One logos if we wanted to do like the video game? So the the caution strips, but with the GB One logo, including one extra one on the hood. Oh, I. So the way my preliminary uh, deco sheets are laid out. I've got a, I've got a, a few extras on there of everything, so hopefully, you know, hopefully I can just keep adding more and more until somebody tells me to stop. Cool, sweet. So thank you. Follow up, follow up. Yes, um, please. So you said like vinyl stickers. Are we talking about like like an actual like sticky back vinyl sticker or more of like a color forms type of actual, situation? Actual sticky backs uh, decal. Yep, vinyl sticker. 
Yes. Good good question, Dave. Uh, yes, not a color form. That, as much as I love color forms. Yeah, I mean, that would also be incredible to do this as a uh, as kind of that option as well. Um, but so this will be sticky, sticky. So like, should you choose if you're like, oh, look at all these extra Ghostbusters 2 logos. I should really cover a water bottle with these. Up to you. That's a choice that you can make for you. Question. Yes. Hi, everybody. Is it a follow-up to the follow-up of the follow-up? No, I think... We've covered the stickers. It's really great. Hey, one thing I'll say, just a compliment to you guys. You guys have been so forthright with information that it's actually kind of been hard to come up with questions because I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of it's out there. Um, sorry about that. No, it's great. It's, it's a, this is a good one of those good comments. Ones. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, um, I mean, you not can bad it. thing at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so we're in the home stretch. Um, we're not quite there. Uh, I think anybody who is like familiar with Haslabs kind of understands like there is this this almost always happens this kind of lull period before the last you know 48 hours so i'm personally very confident that it'll fund um having said that you're starting to see some of the nerves the nervous chatter out there um i already know the answer to this but it's probably a good clarification there's people starting to say i wonder if they'll extend the deadline i wonder if they'll just you know it'll just show up in walmart after all like uh would it be good to address like hey like this is it. If it does not fund, there is no, you know, there's no going back. Uh, not, not to sound dire, but I think from an educational standpoint, there's people who are maybe new to Haslabs who uh, might need that. Yeah. No the... second chances. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the way that the Haslab model works for those who may be unfamiliar with it is that we put kind of dream items up for crowdfund and then should they fund, they move into production and should they not fund, they are never produced. So this is kind of your, your one and only shot at getting this. So if for any reason this does not fund, we would never attempt to do a six inch plasma series ectomobile ever again. Um, and so this is not something that it, we would just, we would say like, psych, we're gonna sell these at brick and mortar, or offer these to another retailer. That is not how Haslabs work. And so everybody has until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on December 2nd with a reminder that we will not charge you any money until, that's right, say it with me, 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on December 2nd, regardless of when you back the campaign. So if this is something that you are excited about, this is kind of your one and only shot at getting it. I have a follow-up to my thing. Uh, yes. It wasn't really a question, but I... Uh, uh, just from like a, a brand uh, Haslab perspective, is the campaign about where you guys would have expected it to be about now, like compared to to past uh, campaigns? Yeah, I think that this one is this is all a little bit of a difficult campaign because the way that it is structured to make sure that, because we didn't do it with tiers, right? Because we wanted to make sure that everybody could get everything that they wanted as soon as this thing funds. So the backer threshold on it is a little bit higher than some of the other campaigns that we have seen that are comparable to this. And so given that it's a little bit, that the backer count is a little bit higher, I would say that it's about where we expected the, so, as we know, with those and those beautiful uh, Brian Briggs HasLab charts bring me so much joy. There's always that hockey sticking up at the end of HasLab campaigns as FOMO sets in. But there's kind of this lull in the middle of the campaign. And a lot of people ask, like, why don't you just shorten the campaigns so that there's less of a lull? Because we know that these are very expensive items and that you may not have $399.99 kicking around in your bank account right now. And so that's one of the reasons why we start teasing this early so that you know that something is coming. And then we do a 45-day campaign window so that people have time to save up to add this to their budget so that it's not a, oh, we dropped something, it's a surprise, and you have seven days, and then you're never able to get it again. Um, so we really, to the best of our abilities, want to make sure that you have the the time and the flexibility to fund this if you are interested in it. Cool. How's that? That's good. Great. It's also it's also like just a different. It's apples and oranges to the last two Ghostbusters campaigns because we had like you know proton packs. Everybody wants five uh, ghost traps. Everybody wants five. Um, so going from these really awesome role play items to action figures, we, you know, we anticipated there being a little bit of a swing. Um, 
but yeah, no, it's it's been a good campaign so far, and you know we've got a lot of uh, we've got a lot of content left to drop um, as awesome. far as like marketing beats and stuff to hit for the for the next week and a half. Yeah, cool. Dave, did you I, have a follow up to the follow up? Um, something kind of follow up ish. Okay. Um, because you know I'm a, I'm a when not if person. Mm-hmm. So um, when the Ectomobile fully funds, um, is the team committed to supporting the project with more 112 scale plasma series figures or releases in the future? That is an excellent question. And you know me and I love being as cagey as Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny came back. So we have the Ectos out on the table. So Lenny is, we're doing an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> So we have the we we haven't had a lot of opportunities to have the models out in the building for people to see. And so as as toy people, you know, we spend a, as people who do this for their jobs, we spend a lot of time looking at really cool toys. So I'm not sure he'd actually seen the models before. So he was just standing at the door with his jaw open like this is so exciting asking if he could come in to see them to which I just said we were doing an interview. So he'll chuckle when he sees this. Um one more plasma series figures. Okay, so you know me. I love a KG answer about what is coming for the future of a line. So you know that we can't necessarily say what may or may not be coming in the future, but the success of a project like this only tells our leadership team that this is a, a brand and a line that have fans and has support and that we should continue putting our development dollars against it. I think that one of the things that we can say is we've gotten a a lot more questions than we thought we would get about the original run of Plasma Series figures, especially the original Ghostbusters 1 figures that we did with the Afterlife line. And that going into this, it's been really interesting because we we made some assumptions of when we were doing this project. And one of the assumptions was that the majority of our backers would already have purchased those figures when we did the Afterlife line. And so the reason we didn't include Ghostbusters 1 figures with the HasLab is because we didn't want to duplicate what we kind of assumed was already in your collections and that we wanted to make sure that you were getting new figures. So while I can't necessarily say exactly what we are doing, stay tuned because we are working on figuring out how to do something that is at least a little bit special around those Ghostbusters 1 figures, knowing that fans are likely going to be looking for those figures or perhaps something that might be similar to them, but perhaps with a couple of updates um, that you may want for your HasLab collection. Does that seem fair? It was very vague. (laughs) It was. Big big and I know what's <laughs> well <laughs> there's only so but, much information. But amazing. It's it's yeah. <laughs> Thank vague you. but amazing. That's what it, that's thanks. That's yeah. always the hope. When when trying to plan for the future, a successful campaign isn't gonna hurt. Yeah. Um you know what I mean? Like uh it, like having this win under our belts for the plasma series line uh is only gonna make things better. <laughs> Right on. Looks like I froze, but I don't know if you could hear me or not. I did. Wait. It di- I didn't notice you were frozen, and I was like, "He's waiting to say something. He's on the verge of <laughs> nope. great excitement." <laughs> but we still can't hear you. <laughs> okay. All right. Anybody have a follow up to the follow up on the vagueness that we just threw out? Or next topic? We can go whatever we want. The world is our oyster. Our Ghostbusters shaped oyster. Well, I mean, I guess I could ask that this might be uh well, we'll see what you can do with this one. So people were super excited about Slimer and Library Ghost. Yeah. Um uh, being part of the uh the Haslab. Um there has been no standalone ghosts uh really, uh besides Gozer, but still kind of human form. Um is it why? Why why did it take a Haslab campaign uh to get to um you know, something like a Slimer or a library ghost? Is it simply just going direct to consumer like this? There's a lot more opportunity to to develop new molds. It, it kind of is like a financial thing or, uh, or is there another reason? I mean, great question. So Slimer maintains his own likeness rights. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There it is. I don't want to ask a lot of questions, negotiating to get Slimer. <laughs> I'm just, these are the, you know, you see these questions pop up. Yeah. yeah. 
there i think that it's it's hard because neither pat nor i were on the the line when they did the product for afterlife so we can't necessarily speak to what the thought process was of the team but that it's been it's been interesting to un, to the the more we do with ghostbusters to understand what fans are looking for and what is really kind of your driving force for purchasing and what you are looking for for toys and what you get excited about which is wonderful it's always good to kind of learn more about that but i think as we have been kind of listening on plasma series desires the reason that we didn't do standalone ghosts for the frozen empire line is because we were already in development on this item um, so this, we wanted this to be something that was really special and we knew from the feedback of everybody who wanted ghosts that it was something really special that we could add to this has lab. Yeah. It's been amazing. The feedback, like it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on pins and needles. I cannot wait till December 2nd. So, cause I, I, the, the figures are so, so, so darn good. Thanks. Our, I... our team has worked very, very hard on them and it's, this is Honestly, uh, I'm tired of looking at it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we the amount of development that goes into a HasLab before anybody gets to see it is hundreds and hundreds of hours of development work. And then we finally get to share them with the world. And then we hope that people get as excited about them as we are. So to be able to finally say, like, yeah, we've been working on a slimer sculpt for like a year and it's fantastic. And we are yeah. very, very proud of it, is is a lot of fun. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. Um, I don't have a follow-up other than great question, Craig. Um, we'll forgive uh, you. <laughs> but I, I do have, I did ask uh, my audience that they uh, wanted me to voice any questions for you all. I mean, this could be maybe even broader than the original question, which was, um, will this Ecto-1 work with the great, uh, uh, you know, cloth good style movie figures that you, the Mego collaboration that you all did um, a year or two ago. Um, and I guess more broadly, like how, how much of a scale range can this Ecto-1 support for, for different Ghostbuster figures that have been made, not beyond just you all? So, excellent question. Uh, so to use Hasbro six inch brands. So the way that we kind of think about our six inch scales at Hasbro, there's kind of two different scales of figures that we see. So Plasma series and then Star Wars Black series are what we kind of, how, what, what are we referring to it internally as? Uh, there's hero scale and cinema scale. Yes. Uh, so kind of more of a, a cinema scale. So, and then we have Marvel Legends series and G.I. Joe classified series that are a little bit more of a hero scale. And so you tend to see that classified series and legends tend to be a little bit on the larger side for six inch scale versus black series and plasma series tend to be a little bit on the smaller side for um, six inch scale, which is not to say that they all don't live happily together, but just kind of as a kind of as a design and how those figures are sized. Like a lot of GI Joes are just over six feet tall in their character descriptions. And so they become over six inches tall for the scale. So we have... We have put other figures from other brands in the car and depending on their articulation, so as long as you can get them roughly into a, you know, seated position um, for a car, all of those figures fit in this car, um, which is something that is very, very cool. Um, so, you know, you can kind of uh, extrapolate your own adventures for what these cars could be used for that I'm sure our PR team would love for me to not uh, yeah. verbalize my thoughts. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a reason Lenny wants to come back in here. Oh, yeah. No, there's cars. there's definitely a reason Lenny wants to come in and play with these cars. Um, but I think that that's, that's something awesome. that's it's that's one of the things that's really cool about having kind of a standardized scale across all of our brands is that so you know that the the six inch scale brands that we have at Hasbro or perhaps brands that were six inch scale or close to six inch scale that may have been Ghostbusters, as long as they have the articulation, even if they are older figures, should reasonably fit in these cars. That's awesome. Yeah, looking at uh, uh, Pat, that 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 uh, angle you just did, it seemed like there was pretty good clearance from on the heads there. Yeah, that's that's why I, that's why I did it. Uh, you know, I don't want to. Uh, no promises, but um, if it's good roughly clearance. 112, it's mm -hmm. pretty good. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. You betcha. 
All right, Jason, got any thoughts, feelings? Sure. Uh, well, I'm quite curious, actually, since we're kind of nearing crunch time here. Uh, when it comes to marketing, getting the word out, uh, is there anything planned to maybe gain the attention uh, or pique the interest of the more common fan? Uh, like I know in the past, you guys have worked with Adam Savage, things like that. Are there any videos maybe in the pipeline or content that could help get the word out a little further rather than the, uh, you know, the, the core Ghostbusters fan base? Yeah. Um, so Adam Savage was so lovely and did an unboxing video for our uh, soon to be shipping two in the box HasLab, which I hope everybody has cleared enough room uh, in their toy storage for those to be arriving. Um, I don't know. I got my stack of five dragonflies earlier this week and I was very unprepared for them. Um, so look forward to my stack of five two in the boxes. But uh, so uh, he was so lovely and did that video for us. So he did a plug for the the Ectomobile HasLab at the end of that video. And then we are we have a couple more things kind of up our sleeve. So we uh, did the video with Ernie Hudson at Rhode Island Comic Con, which was a ton of fun. It was lovely to get to kind of hear some of his memories of, you know, the first time he drove an Ecto on set and what that was like and what he remembers about it and having him kind of look inside and say like, oh, yeah, this is like this is pretty close to the original car which yeah, for we posted what two minutes and 30 seconds and there i think it was an eight or nine minute video yeah <laughs> like <laughs> cutting down to two minutes um it was so that was a ton of fun so stay tuned over the next week and a half for you know whatever fun things that we can magic up with there may be a a road trip uh that will be happening tomorrow to go and get some more content and perhaps a state that is not rhode island um but we'll be able to hopefully post some behind the scenes of that soon <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I had a question. I see discussion. Yes. So the two things that come up all the time are uh, international backers and when those mm -hmm. are added to the, uh, the total. And then there's also discussion on if the backer count is the individual orders or the uh, like if I ordered four Ecto ones, would mm -hmm. the number increase by four or the number increase by one? Number um, would increase by four. Okay, that's yes. what I thought, but I've seen I've seen people say the other way, so I think that's a good uh, it's, clarifier. It's a little confusingly worded on the website because I think it says backers instead mm -hmm. of like items purchased. So I 100% understand where that comes from. With the with kind of the international rollout of Hasbro Pulse across more global markets, those numbers are taken into account when those uh, when those items are backed on the website. So sometimes there's a little bit of a delay. I believe that the way that the new website works is it like pings off three different places. So um, sometimes it can take a minute or two for them to show up as part of the backer count but they are showing up relatively quickly now. For any of the markets that do not have Hasbro Pulse and are listing this with independent retailers, those numbers go into a spreadsheet and then they get updated with the website once a week. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good, good, that's good. Um, one question we had um, people ask was uh, just the decision to kind of go from with Ghostbusters 2 as part of a HasLab uh, figures wise as, as opposed to retail. Um, just kind of the the kind of reasoning behind that. Yeah, I think that that was that's all part of the story that we're telling with this. And so the idea that the truly the top three things that we have been asked for have been ghosts, have been ectos, and have been Ghostbusters too. And so the idea of being able to say like, hey, we know it's been a while since you got plasma series figures, but these are this is everything that you have been asking for in one neat tidy bow and if on the off chance you do not care about ghostbusters 2 at all great news here's a 40th anniversary haslab that you can enjoy but if you do love ghostbusters 2 as much as we are being told that people love ghostbusters 2 that here is kind of an all in that celebrates both of the anniversaries and so again to us it's a it's kind of a fun love letter to the franchise to be able to say like hey, fans, we hear you, and we're sorry it's taken this long, but check out all of this amazing stuff that we're able to offer you. And to include seven figures with a HasLab at six-inch scale is bonkers. Like, yeah, we... All, look at it like a little... It's a little bit of playing catch-up, too, right? Yeah. Like we had such a, such a dry spell for uh, Plasma Ghostbusters figures that uh, it's like, all right, cool, we got to make up for some lost time here. Uh, like how many can we cram into this HasLab and uh, it being an anniversary year for both um, for both movies was just such a, a huge opportunity 
that I really feel like we were just in meetings and we were like, yeah, but can we also add this? And what about these? Oh, and like, can we do this? Our project manager yeah. was at the end. She was just like, please stop suggesting we add more things to this project. We, we can't add anything else, but this is, yeah, we threw. I had a lot more stuff I wanted to add. I know, <laughs> but it is, this is a, this is a loaded HasLab. And so it's been really fun to figure out how we can really maximize what we can give to fans. And so I know that we've talked about this before, but one of the decisions that we collectively made as a team was that these figures will not come individually packaged within the within the HasLab box. So they will be wrapped, they will come lovingly uh, wrapped likely in a tissue or a poly bag to make sure that they stay safe. But because we had so many figures, by eliminating those packaging expenses, we were actually able to add an entire additional figure. And we figured that if <laughs> it, it was it was a lot. And so being able to have those cost savings, we decided that you would much rather have more figures than that packaging within packaging. Everybody and everybody gets a tally. Everybody gets a tally. <laughs> and, and Pat, that actually uh, made me think of something. Like you said that there was stuff that was kind of cutting room floor. Just with the like overwhelmingly awesome amount of accessories that are included in this. Like everybody gets a slime spray, uh, like everybody that gets a slime sprayer gets a slime sprayer. Everybody gets, um, you know, pro proton streams, yeah. free mug beverage yeah, you know, mugs and uh, balloons for the kids. Like what was your- the, Remembering the feedback from these with the original yeah. wave of just like, why doesn't everybody come with a proton stream? Uh, everybody comes with a proton stream. <laughs> So, so not, not making that mistake again. <laughs> but uh, what, what was your cutting room floor, like your biggest kind of cutting room floor? Oh, thing that you uh, I can't that tell you in case, in case of the future. <laughs> okay, fair you enough. Can you throw out one? Uh, I don't know which one to throw out. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can. I think that there were there were discussions around the library ghost with wanting to build out that library scene a little bit more and how we could do how many accessories could we throw in from that? Could we do like giant stacks of books? Could we kind of build out that a little bit more? Ultimately, prohibitively cost of it. Uh, yeah, you get yeah. a nice stack of four books. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but um you know, I, I had some I had some plans drawn up for some six inch scale uh you know seven foot tall stacks that uh turns out those are kind of expensive yeah. to tool and include in a product offering who would have thought uh, yeah <laughs> yeah but no there's rest assured i have no shortage of powerpoint slides that are like and this and this and, <laughs> nice. yes and one of the things that we made sure that we really did not cut costs on were the electronics on this item these things when you see them in real life they light up like christmas trees they are absolutely spectacular and kind of showstoppers for anybody who sees them um and they like they look oh there's my laptop uh they look good on camera but they look incredible in person and so i think that that's going to be a real wow moment for fans when they get theirs in hand and they put batteries in it for the first time and you make the siren noise go and it is it's just you'll get to have the same moment that we had when we first unboxed them and we went, oh my God, these are incredible. Um, which I mean, again, to wow us with something yeah. takes something really special. And so it's, it's, it's been, usually Ghostbusters. It's usually <laughs> Ghostbusters, but it's it's just been so much fun to get to work on these. And then with how clever the Ghostbusters community is with modding all of the cosplay props, I can't wait to see what kind of things emerge for these vehicles. And again, as we're all waiting for our two in the boxes to show up, please remember the PKE meter is not an actual taser when it goes into taser mode. And for the love of God, please don't make it into one. Thank you. <laughs> With all the mechanics inside the PKE, I don't think you can make it into a taser. <laughs> um, uh, related to, uh, maybe not quite really, but, but kind of related to the previous Ghostbusters has lab since they were you know the tools of the Ghostbusters the packaging reflected you know that kind of um ergonomic how they would package their equipment approach uh are, are you how are you going to approach the packaging for this set like what is kind of going through oh. your minds right now on how you're going to approach it good for question. The that's, a, that's such a good question what are you my boss um <laughs> so <laughs> So packaging. He's somebody's boss. That's right. a boss question. <laughs> so, so uh, packaging is actually I kick off. Um, I kick that off next week. 
So I'm going to start working on developing, you know, what that looks like, um, how to best kind of bring forward plasma series, uh, but also stay kind of close to where we've been. Like that two in the box package is so much fun and it's full of, you know, there's an Easter egg on every panel. Um, oh, and it's hiding behind Jason uh, in the corner. Yes, for, back there. Oh, yeah, Easter nice. eggs. So, um, so, you know, I'm, it, it's kind of, you know, do I go fully one way or the other? And uh, I think I might do it both ways and then see which one the team likes more. <laughs> um, I have, can, can I throw out an idea and then you can steal it or not use it? Or whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, It'd be really cool if it was like the firehouse doors mm -hmm. and then you open them up and then it's the like Ecto's face. Ooh, right there. that's that fun. Cool. Cool. I, I, heard, I heard my structure engineer cry somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're throwing out packaging ideas, I think it would be really cool. <laughs> If yeah. it was looked like the old Kenner Ecto one package, ooh, that's a cool idea. A, too. I'm sorry, Craig, uh, you froze yeah. <laughs> an, illust an illustration, but like imagine, like, but it's like the actual, you know, the guys, not as cartoons, but I don't know, some that's not for me. No that's a fun guys. idea, too. I think the, the cool thing about the history of Ghostbusters is that there's no shortage of really cool things that you can do. You can do it in world, you can do it, uh, you can do it kind of Kenner throwback, you can do it as more modern toy packaging but that there's so many it's must be really hard for you to have this many options yeah it's not very uh <laughs> but uh, at the same time um uh, like i you know i've been living in the ghostbusters world uh on my own for 38 years uh and i've been you know living in this world here at hasbro for two and a half three and uh it's just kind of freeing Cause like, I don't have to think too hard about it. Cause I like so much of it is muscle memory. And so much of it is just like, well, what do I think is cool? Because I'm such a huge nerd. <laughs> um, being a huge Ghostbusters fan has been like endlessly helpful on this brand, whether it's coming up with product ideas or coming up with packaging ideas um, or even just like campaigns and, and, you know, being like, excuse me, marketers, I'm overstepping. Like, like that is, you know, kind of what I do here. And to be able to do that with packaging, like I can I can come up with three or four different ideas just off the top of my head on how to do this and how I'm gonna execute it. Um, and then it comes down to budgets and uh, feasibility. Out, yeah. Feasibility. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I'll, you know, I, I listen to all the suggestions. I read the comments, I see what people say. Even the mean things, um, but uh, but yeah, the the packaging next week it's gonna be my it's gonna be my Thanksgiving break. I think is to really dive into what this packaging is gonna look like and how to make it a really cool experience. I mean, you know, the the proton pack was one of the more fun packaging experiences I've I've witnessed somebody kind of go through because my fiance was like having an absolute blast just opening that. So. Yeah, yeah I there was, um, yeah, there's there's definitely there was, precedent for a lot of fun. Yeah, there were there were a lot of things that changed from that HasLab to the two in the box. And I think there's even more things that changed from the two in the box to this to the can. Uh, what are we calling this one? Uh, the Ectomobile. Ectomobile. Sorry, our yeah. internal <laughs> code name for this is like a, like a Simpsons joke and it just gets stuck in my head. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so the. Uh, the packaging kind of guidelines and stuff have have evolved since that has lab because like i don't think i'm going to be doing like a floor puzzle it, <laughs> uh, it is a very impressive uh, floor puzzle though yeah but my goal is still the same uh, jared the guy who designed that uh is a fantastic uh brilliant designer um and going forward i want to i want to take a lot of like that learning and inspiration like that set the tone for everything that came after it um which is really, really cool. And then like, what does an evolved plasma series package look like? They've been using that that canvas kind of line look for a while with the, the khaki jumpsuits and stuff. 
but uh, you know, if there's an opportunity to evolve and expand on that, I'd love to. I'd love to be able to take it. And I think on that note, for anybody who hasn't backed a Haslab since the Proton Pack, and you may be getting your two in the box and going, okay, is it going to be this elaborate of packaging? So just to reiterate, we have made a lot of standardization changes on Haslab packaging since the Proton Pack shipped. We have learned a lot about best practices for shipping because we want to make sure that those items again because they are dream toy items are getting to you in as pristine of condition as humanly possible and so with that comes a lot of kind of an implementation of modularity between the packages so that there's a little bit more standardization of what to expect and so in that so for example that beautiful two in the box external packaging that's behind Jason so inside there are two kind of cardboard kind of pull out boxes that are in there they have a print on them but within each of those boxes there are egg crates that have all of the items nestled safely inside that are wrapped in poly bags so that they are they are secure they will get to you very very securely and then i believe it's that retail box goes inside of a larger cardboard box that gets um corner protectors on it that goes inside of another box that ships to you and so we we understand that um, sometimes shipping companies are not the most delicate with boxes that show up. And so we want to make sure that regardless of how this is treated, the hope is that it gets to you in perfect condition. Yeah. And my goal with packaging is always to make you feel bad about throwing it away. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the best kind. Yeah. yeah. Can I add that I just love the fact that you guys like when it comes to the figures here, I feel like you went above and beyond like the fact that the Ghostbusters two figures, I mean, Winston was really the only one that really needed like a new head, but everybody got a new head. And the fact too, that like with the library ghost, you're not doing the grotesque, you know, monster esque version, which is arguably more toyetic. Like if you were to put one on the shelf, that'd be the one. I don't think a lot of people are lining up to buy a little old, you know, frivolous lady. But that said, you can offer in this and this like a really nice grab for like the hardcore fans. So I, I just wanted to add that. Like, I love the fact that you went with these kind of like the deep cut of the human form of the library ghost. And again, going above me on when it came to the four guys, because to, to me, that was huge. Like that was a big I mean, aside from the fact of getting a second ecto. Why about a second one? Because now I want to like pop the heads off of my second batch and maybe replace the original Ghostbusters heads with a few of them and kind of like do my own little customs and such. Yeah, um, giving characters uh, new and like updated facial expressions is a huge thing for for this because I I didn't I didn't want to just use the same ones. I wanted to do something new and exciting and like like yeah, Winston just needed a shave uh, and a haircut I think, but um, <laughs> but other than that, like yeah, we didn't need to update them, but quality of life upgrades too like the the caliber of the uh the printing that we do for the faces and uh even just the sculpting it, it's just you know miles above where it was five years ago four years ago i don't i don't know what year we're in yeah uh, nobody knows it, yeah. time has no meaning anymore uh, working two years out i'm like oh it's 2026 and I was like no, no. it's not <laughs> so close <laughs> um, but uh but yeah being able to do the new head sculpts has been really fun. And like, you know, uh, Aton and I would comb through the movies and just be like, oh, freeze frame. All right, we'll go like, let's screen cap that. We'll send it to Eric at Ghost 4 and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what he thinks of that. And, um, you know, uh, there's a, also a certain amount of future proofing when it comes to selecting facial expressions or versions of like the library ghost, like making it, making it Ruth, uh, Ruth Oliver, you know, let's say, you know, a year from now, I want to do the, the scary version. It gives me that flexibility to do this more like kind of mass appeal that is more toyetic later on with, while keeping the deep cut in the, uh, in the HasLab offering. And like, now that we've nailed Slimer, the possibilities for Slimer are endless. <laughs> um, so like just knowing that, you know, and I say it all the time, I've said it on countless streams with Craig, uh, <laughs> that that silhouette, that silhouette that Slimer cuts is perfect. Um, I, I love looking at it so much. 
uh, in the least weird way possible, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, make it a little weird. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> it's got to be a little weird. But um, just making sure you're nailing these shapes. And once you have the, the framework of the character and you really understand how that character looks, how that character moves, whether it's the, the facial expression or the character itself, like Slimer not having shoulders. Um, his shoulders are built into his bean-shaped body. Uh, but like... That gives you, as an artist uh, and as like a sculptor, that gives you so much more freedom later on. If you're like, oh, I want to do stuff with new facial expressions, you have this really, really good framework and understanding to start from as you go and you make more, uh, more kind of poses and head sculpts and stuff in the future. I think that that's one of the things that's nice about this not being our first rodeo with these characters. We got to do a run of these that had more of the neutral expressions, and now we get to do some more dynamic expressions. And that's mm -hmm. something that I love when I see an action figure is not just a neutral face, but like expressing some kind of emotion is really cool. And I think it helps to build out that story, and it really kind of places it within that those movie moments, which is a lot of fun and gives us a really great kind of building building blocks for the future. Yeah, I think the big note on all of my head sculpts has have been like asymmetrical uh, expressions like Slimer is not symmetrical. He shouldn't look symmetrical like, you know, none of us are symmetrical. <laughs> we <laughs> like our facial expressions aren't mirrored perfectly from one side to the other. So the, the action figures to get them a more natural look and like a natural feel, um, really having those kind of learnings from previous ones to going to the new ones. Um, like the Dan Aykroyd head, the, uh, the Ray figure, um, he's got, you know, that like upturn. I don't know if this is gonna. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, like those those head sculpts are really fun. Hey Pat, so. Dan Aykroyd famously has two different colored eyes. Did you guys do that for this figure? Yes, sir. You did? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, you see how surprised he just? Went? Isn't that disgusting? <laughs> That's pretty great. That the brown awesome. and the green. It's, it's the. It's is it weirder like, that you did it or that I just have that in my back pocket? Uh, it's <laughs> it's. That, but I think it's both. Uh, we both yeah. spent a little too much time looking at Dan Aykroyd, I think. <laughs> but um, the, yeah, so the face printing for the, I can't remember, I can't remember what they call it. Um, the way we print the faces on mm -hmm. the figures. Face printing technology. Yeah. That's just uh, okay. So like the deco sheet for, for Ray um, has his eyes and they are two different colors. And, you know, it is, it, wow. it's weird because it kind of looks like a flattened, like a like a Roger Rabbit flattened version of his face, yeah. Um, that gets applied to the figure, and but the eyes are two different colors. Um, that's amazing. So I I don't I'm trying to figure out the best way to ask this so so where it makes sense. Um, because I know you, obviously you can't comment on future state, but assuming that this is successful, um, Ghostbusters has traditionally been a brand that like during movie years or entertainment years. There's pretty robust product rollouts, uh, and then in uh, in non-movie years, uh, it, it can be kind of quiet. So there's nothing on the books for Ghostbusters uh, movie right now. Uh, we know there's an animated series coming at some point. Um, does that affect like does the 2025 product rollout uh, is is that a determining factor basically? each year going into the into the because the other thing is ghostbusters you've got the retro you know kenner stuff and then you've got mm -hmm. kids focused stuff and then you have like the adult collector plasma series so um i think we get questions a lot about like what goes into the decision making about how much product gets put into a brand on an annual basis yeah very good question so i think for for ghostbusters especially there is, I mean, you have your, you have your fan audiences who are established. This is a 40 year old brand. And so people who were watching those movies as kids or watched them shortly after they came out are now, you know, adults such as yourselves. Um, but then when, when new movies come out, like Afterlife, like Frozen Empire, you get kind of an influx of kids that are being introduced to the franchise for the first time. And so I think that what entertainment years really offer us a platform for is getting more kids interested in the in the franchise. And so the way that I kind of think about it and keep in mind that the kind of the movie development stuff is not necessarily a me thing that I am in charge of, 
But the way that I think about it is movie years, there's more product that is aimed towards kids. Non-movie years, we focus more on fans. And so what will what is something that our adult collectors are looking for? What is something that they will be really excited about without necessarily needing to do some of the more toyetic -y, kid like like the proton blasters and uh, kind of those elements. Does that seem fair? Yes. Great. I think, I think yeah, absolutely. Um, being able to pull from an entire 40 year history for the fan product, as opposed to, you know, we did, uh, we did kid figures of the original four um, and they were awesome. I love those figures. I made one of myself where I re-sculpted my head and stuck it on. Um, and it was it like, I love those figures a lot, um, but the kid, the kid, stuff is going to be so focused on on the current entertainment whether it's frozen empire whether it's the new uh netflix show um and then in those off years i think focusing on the fans um because i know 2025 is are we in 2025 no we will be it's 24 okay. 25 is next uh, year 26 is the year after you're, you're so close <laughs> um so yeah so like 2025 2026 um those are you know those are kind of um in between years yeah yeah so the new animation i think is soon according mm -hmm. to netflix i don't know if they've given a date on that yet um but i think there's a kenner anniversary mm -hmm. uh coming up in 2026 so uh a real ghostbusters anniversary yep. is that it? yeah um so you know the, being able to focus on the fans um, and get product out without entertainment, I think is really important. And I think that that's also, it's a fun opportunity because it lets us mine legacy content a little bit more than if there was new entertainment that we'd be beholden to. And so both of those are really, they're both fun in their own ways. It's really cool to get to be involved in kind of that new theatrical release process and say like, okay, this is something that we can include from this that is all new that kids will get excited about. But it's also fun, especially for the development team as fans to be able to say like, okay, this is something I've loved for 40 years. This is something I've loved for 30 years. How can we bring this to other people that will be as excited about it as we are? Sweet. Thank you. That's that's awesome clarification. Thank you. Yeah. Thoughts, feelings, anything else? You should get a calendar. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. Pat, you're working so much into the future. You already I think know. it's 2025. It's yeah. I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> what, what year is it? <laughs> uh, Time is a flat circle. It, it was so interesting when we were at London Comic Con. We did a dragonfly unboxing for GI Joe, and everybody was like, "Oh, you must have opened one of these so recently." I was like, "I think the last time I opened one of these was nine months ago because that what like." Uh, we work so far out in the future that I don't remember the last time I touched one of these. And so really it's going to be, uh, I will have the same unboxing experience as everybody else as I struggle through this without reading the instructions. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big thing. When you guys get your two in the boxes, read the instructions. Read the instructions. <laughs> hey, do, hey. Do, do not ignore. Point. So the PKE meter is going to come with a white paper band around it that will show you when you go into Taze mode, how to reset the wings to get it back into regular PKE mode. There are a lot of wrong ways to do this, but the paper band will show you all the wrong ways and the right way just to verbalize this. And we'll do an unboxing video where we're like playing with this and we're showing it to everybody. But you put the wings, they snap back in at 90 degree angles and then they will automatically lower themselves back down. Yeah, Pat was like, Craig, 90 degrees. And I was like, you act like I know what that means, okay? <laughs> I'm a computer person. I don't do degrees. You don't Wait, do that right should angles. be more. In, yeah, it should be more if you're if a computer person. Yeah. Not a good computer. <laughs> so guys, I know, it's amazing I know the two in the box is very cool it's very very cool uh are there any any questions or, or any details anyone wants to see keeping in mind these are uh early prototypes but like i can walk this camera around and give you like a blair witch style view of what's going on <laughs> here <laughs> i mean if we're here you may as well everybody yeah. got a couple minutes for pat's sure. uh hidden mm -hmm. camera version of this yeah, so let's see. Let's see if we got it. Okay. 
I don't know how this is going to look because this camera doesn't focus super well, but. Uh, All right, how, you, how you know, it's pretty good. So there are there are lots of lights in the interior. Uh, so you can see that all four of the figures are hanging out. There is a radio in that is actually built into the roof. So one of the things, and we'll go over this when we do unboxings of the Ectomobile HasLab, is that that radio, when you are putting your roof on, you just need to make sure that the cord of the radio isn't stuck between the roof and the top of the car. Okay. And if if it is, it's okay. You just need to reposition the roof. It's really weird to be able to see myself. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. It's cool. <laughs> an out-of-body the... Emily experience right now. <laughs> yeah. Watch the roof rack on that one. Yep. Yeah. I guess the no, question is, while we're looking at it, how easy is the transition? Oh, uh, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Uh, it's a little more difficult on these prototypes, but uh, it is... Do you want me to do it on this one? Kay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Here, give me a second. Okay, so what you want to do is there's three pieces that you need to take off. So ladder comes off, silver pipe comes off, that way, and then the blue hoses come off. So it's easiest if you do this, if you kind of go in through the trunk, then what you want to do is you pop the back up. Oh, wow. Comes off right like that. Mm -hmm. So then here's the radio that we mentioned. So then when you put it back in, go front side first to move that cord out of the way. These click right in, it goes back on. So the electronics, if you have batteries in it or if you have it in USB-C always on mode, the electronics mm -hmm. will kick in. Uh, well, no, USB-C always on mode, the electronics will kick in as soon as the roof rack is in place. If you have the batteries in, you'll need to click the button. Then all you need to do is little blue friend goes back into the little blue area. Ladder goes back right here. Yep, there we go. And then silver piece plugs in just like so. Ladder comes out. <laughs> Ta-da, easy as pie. Yeah, as someone who has like, other than, you know, sticker fear, like breaking stuff fear, that's yeah. incredible. So keep in mind that these are prototypes, so they are a little bit more fragile and flimsy, and they have handled all of the world travel that they have done over the last eight weeks like absolute champs. So we will make sure that everything fits perfectly into place on the production models, but even on the prototypes. And they don't usually let marketers touch things because we break them. Um, but I have been able to, I can do all the roof rack stuff. I can plug everything in. It is, these are super easy to do. And because all of the electronics live on the roof rack, when you switch the roof racks over, it automatically knows which codes to kick in or to kick on. And so all of the electronics will match for whichever version of the roof rack you have on. Zach has worked so hard on these. Um, and so I don't know which is more complicated, this or the two in the box? Two. Probably two in the box. Absolutely the two in the box. But <laughs> these have the most LEDs that have ever been in Hasbro items. Yeah. Um, I think they, I think the other contender are like those. Uh, oh, including uh, some of our high end other licensed brand role play items that yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you may know and love. Yeah. So, this yeah. the fact that there are this many LEDs in these products is kind of bonkers. Yeah, it's it's a lot and it's a lot of coding. There's two buttons um, under the uh, under the hood. Yeah, under the front yeah. bumper. And uh, one of those buttons is lights, and one of those buttons is sounds. And Zach and I right now are working on button combos. Uh, long presses, short presses, press it twice for this, double click this, press it both at the same time for this, and and just kind of setting up, uh, you know, gameplay functions is how we describe it internally, um, just to make sure that you're getting lights, you're getting sounds, you're getting lights if you only want lights, sounds if you only want sounds, um, and really just kind of... Uh, Kind of making sure that they're true to the movies and also you know nobody wants to listen to the ecto one siren for like two hours um unless you really do but so <laughs> so you know it's it's a great noise but it is grating um and uh you know now that we know we're gonna have the uh usb-c always on um 
which was just such a huge thing when we when we started talking to fans uh, about you know previous has labs and what to do for future has labs before we kicked off this project a big thing was just like yeah just give me the ability to plug it in yeah like i just want to plug mm-hmm. it in and use it as like a lamp <laughs> like like and you know the amount of people that want to take this and plug it into like a smart device so you can you know just have alexa turn it on for you uh when it turns on the rest of your house lights um being able to do that and have the lights just kick on is a really really cool thing that we're definitely this is not the end of that type of thinking yeah um so i'm really excited to see you know the learnings you know it's an iterative process right so all the learnings from the proton pack influenced a lot of the stuff on the trap and the pke and a lot of the learnings from that influenced this and now you know whatever the future brings will have a lot of lighting experience. <laughs> so much lighting experience. <laughs> so we'll have we'll have even more, you know, tools in the tools and talent to lead us into the future. Yeah. Does anybody um, knowing that we're a little bit over time, does anybody have any final questions that they want to ask or final parting thoughts? Jason looks like he has something well, exciting to say. No, 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 not exciting at all. Sorry, um, no pressure. Would, no pressure. Well, if we're, if we're talking lights, I'm just kind of curious, uh, is there, or with the always on when it comes to the Ecto, uh, was there any change up when it came to, let's say the previous props to this one, because of the item it is like, because those were more like the wearable cosplay products. While this is like a stagnant kind of toy that you'd have on your shelf. Are, are there different restrictions, regulations, stuff like that? Is that why, as to why, you know, we couldn't have our proton pack on all the time, uh, was just due to maybe safety restrictions. Good question. That's a good question. I I've absorbed a little bit of information from Zach. Zach's on vacation right now, so <laughs> I don't want to speak for him. But I know that the going to uh, a possibility of the USB C um, connector freed up a lot of restrictions for him. So he was uh, once once that became a thing that we could do, uh, it kind of opened the doors for him to be like, well. Can we just get rid of timeout? <laughs> like, <laughs> like stuff, stuff like that. So, um, so I think I think that was a huge win uh, for him personally. That was like his his crusade for the Wait, last little bit. I feel like that is something that kind of comes with this not being a wearable prop item. Where if we can say like, yes, this is going to live on a shelf. Yes, this will be near a wall plug-in. This is a this seems like something reasonable to do for this item. And I know that a lot of people have found clever workarounds for the pack and being able to kind of use portable batteries, uh, rechargeable batteries with it. Um, but so, and I, Pat and I didn't work on the Proton Pack development team. And so we're not entirely sure what all of those conversations were, but we're really excited about kind of what this potentially means going forward for items that have electronics in them like this. Cool, thank you. Ghostbusters has been kind of a cool testing ground for Hasbro. Mm -hmm. It's allowed it's allowed us as a as a company, not only just within the brand itself, but as a company to try things, um, to try things out that were new and different and you know, use those learnings going forward. And I think that Sony has been such amazing partners when we're like, we have this kind of wacky idea. What do you think? They're like, well, give oh, it a I'm try. Sure. Tell us how to go. I'm sure, okay. I'm sure Eric at GhostCore is real tired of my email address. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it must be, I would imagine as a licensor, if you know that somebody is really passionate about your brand and that your brand is in good hands, regardless of what company is working on it, that just must be something that is so cool. Like I love seeing when other people are working on whether it be Ghostbusters or any of our other brands at Hasbro, just to know that somebody else is as passionate about this stuff as we are is incredibly cool. And there is so much creativity in this community that it's we have a lot of fun seeing what other people are coming up with. Well, that's awesome. It's incredible. I'm super excited. Like I said, I I think that the one thing that you guys are doing um in this campaign that is is making it really great is you've been really open and really transparent about it um from the start and the fact that you had like hardcore ecto fans as consultants uh to ensure accuracy and things like that i just think you know shout out to you guys for for going above and beyond 
Thank you. Um, the As we've said before, we feel very, very fortunate to get to represent our design and development team. And everybody who has had their hand in this project has worked so hard to bring it to life. And so we just count ourselves as being super lucky. Awesome. From a, from a fan standpoint, like, I'm, I'm working on things that I want to buy. And mm -hmm. if I don't want to buy it, there's something wrong. <laughs> so... So being as being as transparent as uh, uh, PR and uh, as we are physically able to, <laughs> yeah. being as transparent as everybody will let me be is really important to me because it it's not gonna if we're doing things right it's not gonna hurt. Yeah. And so thank you guys for all of your support and to all of the amazing Ghostbusters fans out there. Thank you for all of your support. And remember, you have until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on December 2nd to back our Plasma Series Ectomobile Anniversary Edition HasLab campaign. And again, we won't charge you until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on December 2nd. Like all the, all the <laughs> text in the end of the <laughs> Don't forget to head to HasRepulse.com for these and more disclaimers. <laughs> Yeah, see, I could do I that. Can't talk that fast. I, I have a lot to say, so sometimes it helps to say it fast. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you, thank yeah, you. thank you. That was great. Looking, Thanks, guys. looking forward to, to uh, when it backs. Yes, yeah. us too. It's it's not an if, it's a when. And if there's any exactly. more questions or any any clarifying information you guys want, just shoot me an email, shoot Emily an email. Yeah. Um, Happy yeah. to answer any questions. I'm always around. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Have a Bye, wonderful everybody. rest of your day. You as well. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.